Well, like I said, you know, I've been watching him for a while now, commentating him, broadcasting him. He's a very dangerous fighter. Um, I like his boxing ability. He's got some nice boxing ability. Um, you'll watch. He'll make And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Hollywood Avalon here in Hollywood, California, Tom Loeffler's 360 Promotions and Hollywood Fight Nights proudly present to you the main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing this for the WBC Continental America Super Welterweight Championship. Presented by Tecate, the official beer of boxing, Chivas, MGM Resort, and Ocean Honda. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, the executive officer is Andy Foster and the chairman, John Carvalli. The WBC president, Mauricio Suleiman, with supervisor in attendance, and inside the ring, Alberto Leon. Your three judges scoring at ringside, Max DeLuca, Dr. Lou Moret, and Zach Young. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Thomas Taylor. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Hollywood, California, make some noise if you are ready! <laughs> Introducing you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing black trunks, he weighed officially 184 pounds even. In 37 professional fights, his record stands at 28 victories, including 25 knockouts. Seven defeats and two bouts even, hailing from and fighting out of the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, PA. Here is Tyrone Young Gun Brunson! <laughs> and across the ring stands his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing gold trimmed in white. He weighed in 153 pounds. In 15 professional fights, he stands perfect. 15 victories, all 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the undefeated super welterweight fighting out of Big Bear, California, El Flaco, Seri Boachu. All right, gentlemen, belt line's good here, belt line's good here. Both got my instructions in the back. Protect yourselves at all times. This is my command. Start them up. Back to the corner, gentlemen. There we look at Tiller Tick, 24, 30, 14 inch age difference. 76 reach to 72. So he's got a reach advantage on both shots. Let's see if Brunson can stay on the outside and use that reach to his advantage. If not, both shots moves on. All right, this is round one of a scheduled 10 rounds. This is the junior middleweight division, and there is a regional title on the line, the WBC Continental Americas title. I'm not quite sure what that means. I think if the winner of this bout gets a ranking in the top 10 yes. or 15 of the exactly. WBC. That's what uh, happens. You, you sit there, you would know. You, were, you spent a week in there. Cancun <laughs> around all those WBC people. Is well, that what it means? Yeah, you get a ranking, and then obviously. Well, it should be one. Because when I went to BC Continental, that raised me number one. Oh, so the I Continental don't, don't title. No, not anymore. What, what I'm shocked is that it's a 10 rounder. Mine was Yeah, it used to be 12 rounds. rounds. Yeah, that's true. That what they start, what they did, I don't know, a, a few years ago, is sort of the regional bouts, the NAB, you know, the NABF, NABO, you know, North American regional titles, continental titles. They dropped them from 12 rounds to 10 rounds. That's kind of strange because I would think about it like this: if I fight an intercontinental fight. And I can go 12 rounds, that proves me I can go 12 rounds. Mm -hmm. So when I fight for the world title, so when I fight for the championship, it's not the first time I'm going 12. But maybe that's why back in the day, if you won that title, you got a number one ranking because you were ready to go 12 rounds, whereas now it means, okay, you're a solid contender. Uh, that's a, that's, to me, that's a baby step. I, <laughs> take, I take a grown man's hey, welcome step. to the new era, man. Make it 12 <laughs> rounds, keep it. Some things got to stay the same. Yeah. No, okay, you change it for 10. What's 10 going to do? Because remember, if this ranks him number one, let's say it ranks him number one, right? His next fight's a world title fight. What if he goes 12 rounds? I mean, honestly, I don't even think Serhei would go 12 rounds. Oh! Let me tell you something. Serhei has put in the work for this fight. He gets great sparring. He trains around world-class fighters uh, at the Summit in Big Bear, California. His sparring partners are often bigger than him, so he has to, to work on his boxing ability. As you've noted, Kevin, he's getting better, technically speaking, being a little more thoughtful with his punch selection. 
but you can't discount the punching power, the athleticism, and most importantly, the experience of Tyrone Brunson. Yeah, and one, he's, he's got some smart people in his corner. I wonder about Brunson, he's got 25 knockouts, any given time, he could turn, change things. And that's, that's the difference in the fighter. See, the thing is, in boxing, a guy that can punch, a George Foreman, okay? Uh, Julian Jackson. Yes. These guys from his punches, they change fights. Yes. And I believe Brunson's one of those guys that can change fights too. I, did you hear how serious he was in the pre-fight interview? I'm gonna knock him out. I'm the knockout artist. Well, yeah, but so is, so is Boachuk. So is Boachuk, but he is pretty firm on this one. Well, Brunson has the right attitude, and Boachuk has the right attitude. Oh, and I like, Sergei did say that uh, he has been working on his boxing ability because he knows he can't just keep knocking everyone out, which we don't mind, but he needs the technique. Well, we're seeing it because he's keeping young gun, not so young gun, at the end of his punches. Kevin, I scored the first round for El Flaco, Sergei Boachuk. Yeah, 10-9. Um, just being an active aggressor. Now, no real punches landed, but ring generalship right now, I El Flaco has it. Brunson, like I said, I'm waiting for Brunson to open up. I think it's corner, I want to take a look at him. I don't believe he's intimidated, but he can be intimidated. You never know. Boachuk has Abel Sanchez and Ben Lira in his corner. And who's the guy who's in uh, Tyrone Brunson's corner from Philadelphia? The young man. He came over. And, I know him. Yeah, I know him too. And I forget. Where I, I know, know he's him. basically a, he's like an understudy of the late great Bowie Fisher, who trained and developed Bernard Hopkins, yes. and also learned from Nazim Richardson. I know he, he came up around those trainers. I want to say it is it, his he, first he, name and his last name starts with the letter D. He's been in the game for a long time. Yeah, I, I Davis, know him for a lot like, of years. He's like, very credible. Yeah, like Dave Davis. Somebody on Twitter, tell me what that, what that guy's name is. Because he deserves recognition, and shame on me for forgetting his name. Exactly. <laughs> me too. We know each other greatly, but I don't right. know. A lot of people see him boxing. I know right. them. By I know the face, face. I know. But I don't know the name. And I talk to them. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And I have conversations. <laughs> well, somebody watching the stream, let us know. I think it's, it's Davis something. Anyways, he knows his stuff. He learned from the best. He knows what he's doing. Yes. So very, you know, we, they have world-class corners. And Brunson is, is, is trying to, you know, he, does, he doesn't want to be a gatekeeper. He wants to be a, a legitimate contender. And if he can beat a hot prospect like Boachuk and, and get the WBC Continental America's title, he will be that. And Boachuk, of course, wants to advance. He wants to evolve from being a prospect to a contender. Well, you can see what Bronson is doing here. He, started, he found his done through the jabs. His corner with a more work out of him. Not to set a pattern for Bochuk to go forward. And um, right now, like I said, you know, Bochuk is a very busy fighter. And Brunson seems relaxed. He's giving up ground to Bochuk. He doesn't want to get in the battle in the trenches just yet. I think he's looking for counterpunch opportunities. And Boachuk is doing what Boachuk does, which is uh, walk down and break down his opposition. He's doing it a little more intelligently than he did, say, a year ago. And we've seen a steady progression from Boachuk this year. He started the year off fighting Cleotis Mookie Pendarvis, who was sort of a fringe contender at 140 pounds some years ago. Took care of Mookie. Uh, then they brought in the uh, experienced former welterweight contender, more of a, you know, kind of a junior middleweight, middleweight, journeyman gatekeeper, uh, Freddie Hernandez. You know, Hernandez, we thought maybe he could take him some rounds. Boachuk stopped Hernandez as they exchanged some big right hands. Yeah, he, um, he just landed a big right on the, Brunson right The now. last opponent that Boachuk was in with was a young guy from Mexico. Nice record. He was like 16-3-3. and three. Fernando Marin, who was a tough customer. And I thought just on sheer toughness, Marin could, could you know, it, maybe take Boachuk into the late rounds. And Boachuk just put such a beating on the dude. Even though he didn't drop the dude, they had to stop it uh, in the fifth round. So Boachuk is, even though the level of his competition has been stepped up, um, he's been able to, to fight often this year. This is his fourth fight of 2019 because he's knocking guys out. Yeah, like I said, that's good. He's getting lots of practice. That's the key. The more you do it, the better you get at it. That's the bottom line. Right. Very active for Sergei. 
I've got Boa Chuck up two rounds. Me too. Yeah, two, um, two zero, so I got a 2018 Sarah Hay. The one thing I see Bo Chuck that he can do, he does very well, he stands in front of his opponent, but he's moving a little bit. Yeah. And he knows his range. So he knows what he can get away with and what he can't get away with. That's the key with this game. Boxing, if you know where you're at and you know your opponent can't hit you, but you can hit him, <laughs> then you're going to win a fight. And that's what Bo Chuck does. And he's a supremely conditioned athlete. You see, he's not breathing hard. He's very calm. They, they haven't even bothered to take out the mouthpiece because it's not like he needs it, you know? Yeah, like I said, he's trained up in Big Bear, the old school training camps. Um, you have no choice but to be in shape. Yeah, and he loves to train and he loves to run. And he, he, no one can outrun him. Nobody. That's no what I've heard. He can keep running like Forrest Gump. Just keep running and running. That's what I've been told. And, and I've witnessed it myself, him. some of his sparring. I've witnessed a sparring session that uh, Abel and Ben Lira, they brought him down the hill because he gets, he does more of the, you know, the technical work and, 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 and boxing lessons at the summit. But every now and then they bring him down to sea level and into the greater L.A. area. And he gets into some old-fashioned gym wars with some tough guys. And I saw him at Javier Capatillo's gym in East L.A. about three weeks ago. Can't remember the name of the guy he was sparring with, but he was an undefeated welterweight prospect. I think out of San Diego, Tijuana area. And they just went at it, man. And it was, but you know, you saw the craft, even though Boachuk, because he was in with a, a slightly smaller guy, Boachuk was electing to do mostly in fighting, inside fighting and hard pressure, but you saw a lot of inside craft from him. And it was just a quality six or eight rounds. And then they go back up the, the hill, back up to Big Bear, and then he's in with world-class guys like uh, like Michael Soro, who's world-class at, at junior middleweight, out of France. He also trained over at uh, Legends. He sparred at Legends, and they loved him so much that they want him back, but obviously it's kind of a far drive yeah, for him. Yeah, it's a long drive. It's, it's, yeah. But he's learning and he loves it. And I'm liking the punch selection here. And I like that he's not over committing to his offense. Oh, nice. Oh, Snap the head back yeah. of Brunson with a straight straight right. And he's been looking for that right. Brunson took it. Not a big thing. Yeah. Now, now that's what Flacco. Oh! 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 Right hand to the temple. Yeah. Sends Brunson down. What? Hit him on the temple, right? Temple. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to see in slow motion. It's accurate. Yeah, it was right to the side of the head. I think it was a temple shot. And often that affects the equilibrium of yeah. the fighter. Brunson being the veteran, he didn't jump to his feet. He took his time to get to his feet. And he's not going to panic. And we'll see how dangerous Brunson is when he's hurt, if he is indeed hurt. You can hear his corner say his lazy jab sit in. Yeah, that's what happened. He came over the top. We're going to find out on the replay exactly how it landed. And you could tell Boa Chuck was looking for that shot. And there, there it is again. again. Brunson still looks a little oh, buzzed. Well, I tell you what, Boa Chuck is aiming these shots to the temple. Right to the temple. I think Brunson might have caught Boa Chuck with the hook. He's trying to, he needs to earn some respect here. Brunson loading up with the hook, getting some respect. He'll survive this uh, third round. Now he's being more mathematical with his counters, Bronson is. Well, he needs to be. 10-8 round, of course. I was just gonna say 10-8. Yes, sir, so I have Boa Chuck up, as I'm sure you do, Kevin, 30 to 27. Oh, no, 26. 26. Yes, my math needs work. Yep. Two Thank point you. round. Then we take a look. He's going to the body. Okay, Boa Chuck, going to the body, and overhand right, right? You know, it was on the, the jaw. Chin. Yeah, it wasn't on the temple. Oh, the, jaw, on the, okay. the body distracted him. He put the hands down as he yeah. threw the lazy jab. Yeah, that he was right sort of on the cheekbone and the jaw. In real time, it looked like it was a temple shot. Well, he threw a lazy jab. When when Bronson threw a lazy jab, Bochuk came over the top. And when he came over the top, and that's how you get hit. This is boxing 101 right here. But you know what? After that knockdown, it looked like Bochuk was aiming for the temple with those with the with the shorter right crosses. They sat Bronson on the stool a lot longer. 
So they're getting blood circulation to his legs to get him up earlier. Um, and Brunson's an Brunson. experienced, <laughs> yeah, he's an, he's an experienced fighter and he's got an experienced corner. Um, and they want to make sure that he's, uh, you know, he's I haven't properly seen recuperated. I'm waiting to see something from Bronson. Show me something. That's if he can. So he's just I, that I, you know good. What? I like I like Brunson's jab. Um, and he looks. I mean, his body looks fresh to me. He looks. I mean, he looks athletic. His punches are, are fast and they're fluid. And he's not. He's not landing a lot of them. He needs to. But uh, you know, he's giving. He's giving Boachuk something to think about. Boachuk just can't walk in without any respect. Well, Boachuk's taking his time. He's plotting the planet. He's utilizing the jab right now. That's the one key that I give Bochuk a lot of credit for, the jab. The jab, yeah. He sets the jab up. And you can see there's Murat Gossip. That's one of his best friends and his uh, stable mate. He's there coaching him, telling him what he should and should not be doing. They've been in the ring together. Yeah. I mean, I can't say if they've sparred together. No, they, they have. They like, they'll move have. around. Yeah, so, so Garcia just takes it easy on him. And, and you know, Boachuk, Wow. Boachuk has to mind his P's and Q's. And, yeah. and Boachuk gets in there with, with super middleweights, too, and light heavyweights. And um, that's where he works. Oh! Right hand. Down. Big right hand. Brunson down again. He, he's down. Like, yeah. He's, and now, he's, out. now he looks a bit discombobulated, yes, unlike the first knockdown. Look at his leg. Referee Thomas Taylor is taking a good look at him, and he's letting him know, yeah, because the equilibrium isn't there. The legs aren't fully under. He's got a little over a minute to survive. Wow. Let's see if he can do it. Forward Chuck is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. Goodness it, gracious. It, yeah. He keeps telling me he wants rounds. Then I said, don't knock them out so early, but. But he just can't he help it. He just himself. can't help it. He's, he's just that good. So guess what? 52 seconds. Oh, yeah, he, nice he right hand land landed right by Brunson. Yeah, Brunson, yeah. And we're oh no, by Brunson. Yeah, and we're seeing some some upper body movement from Brunson. So Brunson, he doesn't have his wits about him, but he's got some survival instincts in there. There's corners wants him to move. Yeah, but it's not easy for him to move. You can see, it's yeah. like he's on roller skates. But he's better off trying to tie up. Yeah, you know what? He's Bo making Chuck. he's making Boachuk miss. He landed a sort of a borderline right hand. You know, right on the belt line. He's trying to get, oh, the, the right oh, hand. Oh, uppercut. He's got to tie up. Yes, you're right, Tie him up. Yes. That's what he's missing. He's got to tie him up. He's got 13 seconds. Oh, oh. And he's down again. Good. Twice in the fourth round. Oh, it's over. Thomas Taylor, yeah. so enough. And, um, you know, better well. to be safe than sorry in yeah. boxing. This is a dangerous sport. Could Brunson have gotten up from that second knockdown in the fourth round? Maybe. Should the fight have continued? I don't think so. Well, both Chuck was getting stronger and stronger. Yeah. And Bronson was getting oh, weaker. His legs were going on him. Yeah, the legs were not under. He was moving about the ring, but you could see in his body language that yeah. he was still neurologically scrambled in there, so it was very hard for him to protect himself. Um, and if you can't protect yourself in against uh, a puncher and a, a, such a good technical fighter, like Sarah Boachuk, you're going to be in trouble, and it's really up to the referee to keep a close eye on you. Okay, Brunson's coming so up. So well done to, to, to Thomas Taylor, our referee. Make sure to stop the fight when it was time to stop it. And uh, there's uh, Sarah paying his yep. respect. This was an incredible main event. Yes, it was. Four and rounder. Boachuk, uh, you know, he's now a contender, at least in the eyes of the WBC. He's getting closer to real contender status. Let's go to Joe Martinez. He has the official verdict. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 50 seconds, round number four. Your winner by KO victory. Now 16 and 0, 16 consecutive knockouts, and new WBC Continental America Super Welterweight Champion, Sam Hang, El Flaco Bohachu. Well done to the Ukrainian. Kevin, what does it feel like to get a belt, that first belt around your shoulder or waist? Well, when you get a belt, it shows you're on your way. You definitely accomplished something. Um, when I got my first belt, it was actually a New York State belt. Yes. Um, it showed I could do it. You need to break that ground. And that's breaking the ground. And then you get used to that feel, and you want more of it. Because, you know, humans have addictive behavior. 
Sure. So I get one belt, then I get another one. You want to go higher and higher and higher. You want to add to the collection. Exactly. And not only that, <laughs> not only that, you want to see as high you can go. Here we take a look at the instant replay of the stoppage of the fight. Congratulations. You have that I see beautiful Chuck, green belt. The shots were hurting. You know, you always lie to me. You know this. You always say you want to go rounds. And I'd say, do not knock them out early. You knocked him out fourth round. You knocked him down three times, actually. Why didn't you want to put in more rounds? Just happened. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm boxing. I'm boxing punch. I'm no, I no want to knock out. I'm boxing. I'm just boxing and punch. This was the toughest opponents of your career. How did you, how did you find Brunson? Tom Loeffler found him. Tom Loeffler found him. <laughs> How did he do in the ring? How you? I know that you guys were studying each other at the beginning. He, you, you kind of got caught just a little bit, but you caught him obviously. Did you find him? Did you think he would be a tougher opponent? Because he kept saying he was going to knock you out. He was going to be the one to knock you out and give you your first loss. Yes. Bronson, good, good opponent, good fight for me. That not easy fight. This good fight, good practice for me. I am good ready before this fight. I know this opponent. I see fight opponent. I know this heart, this good punch. I'm, I'm boxing. I'm good ready before this fight. I'm boxing today. I show good boxing today. Special for my fans. Special for my family. Special for my coach, my team. I'm so you did good. You, you told me that you were working on your boxing technique. You did show it. We were mentioning it downstairs. Kevin Kelly even said he was much more impressed that you were using more of your technique as opposed to just going for the knockout. Mm. That's what we did in the gym. This is my work. I, I'm working before fight. I'm my, my coach told me work this work. I'm working this before fight. I'm working this for fight. Can we do a replay? Are we able to? Which round? The fourth round. Let's do. Turn around. We're going to show you the fourth round where you knocked him out. This is the first. First knockout? This is the first. What, what happened here? You caught him? Yeah. You played. You snuck that uppercut? Uh-huh. Yeah. I cut corners. You cut I corners. Cut you, corners. I, I saw your you. footwork. I saw that. You cut the corner and you threw that uppercut. Uh, congratulations. I mean, this I know you worked very, very hard for. This is your step up fight. You have put people are, they know about you. You are a top prospect. We're going to see you knocking more people out very, very soon. I cannot wait. And I saw Gassiev in the corner over there rooting you on. Congratulations. Me turn around, message to your family. Go ahead. Don't, I'll give you my mic. You want to talk? Give me, give you, me, please. I'll give you the okay, mic. okay, thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you, my fans who come in my fight. Who are here? Thank you, my friends. Here, my friends, thank you, my friends. Thank you, my team. Thank you, my. Thank you very much, my coach Abel Sanchez. This is 50% work, my coach. Hey, thank you, Tom Loeffler. Tom Loeffler, make very good show. Thank you, my Ural promotion. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Спасибо всем моим украинским фанатам, кто смотрел мой бой, кто не спал. Всем большое спасибо. Надеюсь, я вас не подвел, порадовал хорошим боксом. Всем большое спасибо. You guys give it up for Sergey Blagojevich.